from Gaiman Petro. It's the DC3 Coaches Show. <laughs> Now here's your host, Ryan Osmus. Hey, thanks everyone so much for being here this week. We've had a lot of Kong sports action since we last got together. We finished the first full week of school, our volleyball and soccer teams have had several matches already, and of course our Conquistador football team faced off against conference champ Independence in its first game of the season. We'll talk with women's soccer coach Stu Bordy and Conk head football coach Gary Thomas about the start of their season and what's coming in the near future for both squads. We'll also learn the name of this week's Conquistador Athlete of the Week. Plus this week we're featuring one of our flourishing academic programs as we chat with DC's Director of Nursing and Allied Health, Michelle Haley. We've got a full slate to cover, so let's see what's happening in, D3C, in DC3 sports. The Conk volleyball team under new head coach Rachel Williams has seen a challenging start to the season, losing its first five matches. But the Conks look to bounce back tonight as they are taking on Barton County right now in Great Bend, so good luck to those ladies. After falling in their first match of the season, men's soccer is two and one, winning two straight against Southwestern Christian and Murray State. Women's soccer has rebounded as well. After dropping their first two, the Conks were able to get a convincing four four to one road win over Eastern Oklahoma State this past weekend to improve to one and two. Both men's and women's soccer will be in action tomorrow in Hillsboro as they take on Tabor College. The Conquistador women's soccer head coach is Stuart Bordy, who is in his second season leading the team, which finished with a 10-8 and one record overall and a 6-3 and one mark in conference play last year. Stu is a native of Ghana who came to this country in 2004 playing his college soccer at Sterling, where he graduated with a degree in exercise science. Let's welcome Coach Bordy to DC to the DC3 Coaches Show. Coach, good evening. Good evening. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm about to knock one of our props over before we actually get started. Yeah. So as I mentioned in the uh, the intro, you're entering your, your second season. Yes, I am. Why don't you share a little bit uh, with the fans as well as the uh, audience this evening a little bit about, about yourself and how you ended up here at Dodge City Community College. you got a really neat uh, backstory, of course, being a native of Ghana, but just share with us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be here in Dodge City and with Dodge City Community College. Uh, just like you said, uh, my story begins in Ghana. Um, I was born in Ghana, Ken, when I was young, at a very young age. Uh, played soccer. Soccer was something that I've always loved. Uh, I played other sports, of course. Whenever I got to the United States, I played football, American football. Uh, I wrestled, ran track, um, and yeah, I, I, I was blessed to go run track also at Sterling College and also got to play uh, soccer. Uh, after I got done, after I got done at Sterling College, uh, I went on back to Oklahoma City, worked with Oklahoma City Energy, uh, which is a USL pro team. Uh, with them, I worked, as a, I worked as a strength and conditioning coach. Uh, and with that, I mean, on the side, I also worked as a assistant coach. Uh, through Oklahoma Christian, and I was traveling a little bit with FC Barcelona soccer camps, and uh, I heard about the job here at DC3, and uh, I decided to apply for it, and uh, I got the job. And so far, I mean, it's been it's been a blessed journey um, coming in, and I've had a, I mean, I love this job. Um, if you were to ask me if this is where I'll end up, um, I would tell you that you're lying. Um, so far, it's, it's been blessed, and uh, I love my team, and I'm very sold to this program. I thought, before we actually uh, went live, I was just asking you, 
off the record how things were going with your with your team, your overall your overall thoughts. You want to just share a little bit about what we were uh, speaking about as it relates to your team. You, you love your team. That's wonderful yeah. to hear. But you just want to speak about the uh, the overall atmosphere of your team team right now and how things are going. Uh, overall atmosphere of the team. I mean, we're we're a big family, uh, which is extremely nice. I don't have to really tell the girls or force any kind of team bonding. Uh, with the girls, um, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. For women, for women, it, it's it, it's awesome. Uh, they all just kind of glue together, and I mean, they're they're doing awesome. Um, they hang out together. I mean, they work hard. They come in day in day out, um, and of course, I mean, with with uh, with the way our season started, um, they never gave up. Uh, That's pretty good. Yeah, let, 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 let's touch on that a little bit. Uh, congratulations is uh, in order. We're just you're just coming off of your first victory against Eastern Oklahoma State yeah. uh, College, four one victory. So congratulations, hey, coach. Thank you. Thank but that puts us at an overall uh, one and two record for uh, for the year. So congratulations on that uh, big win. But you want to speak a little bit about that win? You, you guys had kind of an offensive explosion there in the second half with three goals, and then you were able to play some lockdown defense and only gave up gave up one. You want to speak a little bit about what you guys were able to do offensively and then defensively in that game to come out victorious? Oh man, it, I mean, like I was saying, I mean, we went down, we went down to Eastern to play Seminole, Seminole, uh, there we got our second loss against Seminole, uh, which was your, uh, we lost, we lost your two, and uh, yeah, the girls were a little bit down because they felt, they didn't feel like they played their best game. And um, they, instead of them kind of like, instead of them kind of like being down about it, they were motivated for more. Um, and we took it on the next day. We didn't have a day to rest. We went on to go play Eastern and uh, the girls were very motivated and they just showed up and played. Um, yeah, they played and we got the result we wanted. Um, and I'm very happy with them. Um, they keep working and they keep getting better. Um, so we look to see more, see more victories out of them. So that, that's wonderful uh, that those first two losses didn't have a, a, a negative impact upon your yeah. team, that they were still fighting and stayed positive. Oh, yeah. And congratulations on that on that first victory. Yeah, so this coming, well, not this coming week, actually tomorrow. Yes. You're in Tabor College yes. for a 4 p.m. start, I believe. Yes. Um, so good luck for tomorrow afternoon. And you just want to share a little bit about uh, Tabor College and what you're expecting to see from see from them, them and your, your yeah. keys to, to success in that game. Yeah. Uh, Tabor plays in the KCAC. Um, which their coach is Ian Thomas, awesome guy, great coach. Uh, we played them last year and we got a victory against them. Um, Tabor in the past has been very good um, and we look to seeing some good competition and facing our truly face, um, truly testing ourselves again. Uh, we've, we've had a little miscommunication, a little mishap, but we look to facing Tabor and fixing those floor problems and I mean we, we just want to see what, how we truly are against a good team, a very good team. Uh, I believe Tabor is going to be very good. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm um, ready to see what the girls can do against Tabor. Before we uh, close with our segment, you obviously had a really good effort there with the 4-1 victory. You want to kind of speak to any of your players uh, individually and kind of what you, you might have seen from, uh, from any of them from an individual basis, some of the things that they were able to do as they stood out in that game? Uh, I mean, from leadership, uh, from leadership, uh, my sophomores, uh, Lily, Lily uh, Pam, uh, Mello, Melissa, I mean, we, we have countless of leaders, and it, it all starts with the leaders. And so then, and so then, uh, kind of like being down about it, they wanted more, they've been there before, they, you can tell the experience from them, which I'm very proud of them yeah. about that. Uh, they took leadership and they helped out a lot. Um, well, excellent, Coach. 
Yeah. Say, I, I want to thank you for coming in. It's wonderful to hear your uh, backstory. We uh, we appreciate you. Um, congratulations on that first victory, and good luck. Good luck tomorrow. Thank right, you. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Congratulations. All right, thank you. The Dodge City Community College nursing program has been rated one of the top nursing programs in the state of Kansas. And DC3 students taking the national licensing exam are passing at record rates. Here to talk to us about the spectacular academic success of the DC3 nursing program is Director of Nursing and Allied Health, Michelle Haley. Please welcome Michelle Haley to the stage. Michelle. Hello. Nice to be here. Hi. Nice to be here. Nice, nice to have you. And, well, and in fact, you are our first non-athletic department guest. Well, I'm so glad to be here. Nice to have you I'm here, and, here. Uh, and welcome. Before we get started with some of the questions related to the nursing program, why don't you introduce yourself to the uh, to, to the community? Let them okay. know. Let them know a little bit about who you are. Well, uh, I am actually an Arkansas native that moved to Kansas about seven years ago. I've been a nurse for about 25 years, and I live locally with my my husband and we're just kind of an empty nest right now so we're just enjoying enjoying life yeah. and I love Southwest Kansas I love being here the community is amazing well it's a pleasure to have you here because obviously this is the coaches show yes. so we are going to highlight our coaches our athletic departments okay. our student athletes but we are an institution of higher learning so we wanted to invite uh, our academic departments in and share about all of the wonderful, wonderful things that's going on within their departments. And for those that don't know, I'm actually your, your supervisor. Yes. So, so I know of a lot of the great things that are taking place within your department. So I want to start first. One of the really special things that's taking place in your department is related to what's called the NCLEX yes. exam. Can you explain to us what the NCLEX exam is and uh, how you've been able to obtain all the success you guys have over the last couple yes. of years? So our NCLEX exam is the examination a nurse takes after graduation in order to be licensed as a nurse. And so we are actually graded, for lack of a better term, uh, on how many of them pass it on the first try. Uh, yeah, well, speak a little bit to where we were at as far as pass right. rates a few years ago to the kind of pass rates that we're we presently seeing and how how that's jumped us uh, in the top six, I We're believe, six in, 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 in pass rates in the state. So please speak to that. So in 2014, our pass rate was 56%. So 56% of, of the students that took the exam passed it the first time. National, the, the line that the State Board of Nursing wants us to be at is at least 80%. So we had some work to do. So we made some changes in the in the department, increasing the rigor, um, just adding some more clinical experiences, just trying to enhance the curriculum to improve our outcomes. So the in 2015 we had 77 percent, in 2016 we had 88 percent, and in 2017 we had 95 percent. Yeah, that yeah, those are excellent, excellent. Yeah. So I just kind of want to peace a little bit and, and reiterate what you said, but a few years ago, our pass rates were hovering right over 50%. Right. And presently, we're well over 90%. Yes. And, and our class from this past year that just graduated, they're now in the process of completing their NCLEX, correct? Yes, they are. And I, and I believe that we're on kind of that same we're path and same road as we were path. the year before. We still have a few left to test, but we're on the same path as of right now. Okay, excellent. And I, and I don't want to come back and regret this, but we're over the 90% 90, 90 right, right now. now as yes, we are. Right. Okay. So that's good news. Congratulations Thank to you, you and your staff and the things that you've been able uh, to implement. And that, that, that is, uh, it's hard to put into words the kind of improvement that, we, that we've seen. So congratulations Thank to you. all Thank of you. you very much. One of the things I'd like to visit about or give you an opportunity to speak to is just the overall importance of nurses within the healthcare within the healthcare industry, the role that they play, and just how important they are to the healthcare machine. If you, if you right, will. right. So nurses play a very key role in healthcare. They're kind of the middleman for everybody. They're advocates for the patient, make sure the patient's comfortable, make sure they're taught what they need to know about their disease processes. Uh, they're kind of the soft place for patients to fall. Um, they add the love to the to the healthcare setting. It can be very intimidating to be a patient, 
And so the nurse's job is to kind of alleviate that in both the patient and their families. Right, absolutely. So obviously they play a significant role right. in, uh, in the healthcare industry and, and healthcare in, in general. So we want to thank you, all of your thank staff you. and your students for what you do for, for patients and for the community. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's just, in, we, we got just a couple of more minutes, I okay. believe. So, so maybe one more final, okay. uh, final question. Uh, if someone's interested in the nursing, nursing field, because we have, because uh, our nursing college is a part of Dodge City Community right. College while at the se same time being separate. Right. So if someone's out there interested in, in the nursing field, what can they do? What do they need to do to get started? Who can they contact? Um, contacting at DC3, they can contact Cameron Brown, who is our nursing success coordinator. She's our pre-nursing advisor. Yes. She can tell you how to go from there. Yeah, Cameron is, is wonderful. She is. So once again, we want to thank you for being here thank this evening. You. Thank you for sharing with us about Dodge City Community College as a nursing department. We're seeing a lot of success there, so keep up the keep up the good thank work. You. Thank, thank you, thank Michelle. You. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Our Conquistador Athlete of the Week is quarterback Drew Harris. Drew actually came off the bench for the team's home opener against Independence performing well despite not starting, throwing for 128 yards on 10 for 17 passing, including a 51 yard touchdown. He also picked up 25 yards on the ground. So congratulations to Drew Harris, your Conquistador Athlete of the Week. And joining us next to talk about Harris and the Conks performance in the season opener, as well as this weekend's matchup against Garden City, is eighth year Conquistador head football coach, Gary Thomas. Coach, nice to have you back. Good to be good, back. Good to, good to see you. As always. Always, always, always a pleasure to talk to Absolutely. talk to talk to you. So we'll start off obviously speaking a little bit about um, Independence. Yep. Uh, fifth ranked uh, team in the country rolled into town here mm -hmm. uh, last Friday. They came away with a uh, tw thirty-eight to twenty yep. um, uh, victory. You just want to give us your overall thoughts as it related uh, to the game and what you what you saw from your team. Um, two good football teams, I think, took the field. Um, we just, we couldn't overcome our own mistakes, and uh, they did a good job of limiting theirs. And, uh, you know, it's live and learn, and, and we'll try to rebound next week and, and get a little bit better than we were. But uh, I, I think everybody's disappointed with, uh, I don't want to say the overall product that we put out there, just kind of how we lost. Um, you know, you never want to, you always want to, you never have a problem getting beat by a better team. It, it, it hurts a little bit more when you're when you're not sure. Um, so you almost feel like we'll never know because you never get a second. You know, in, in baseball they might play the same team four times in a weekend. You know, Absolutely. we get we get one game every 365 yeah. days. So um, when, when you feel like you potentially match up with somebody and then you you kind of give the game away, it kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And, and you know, but you know, it's it's what we created. So we've got to learn from it. We got to get better. Yeah, uh, it, it, from a fan perspective, and of course we've talked on several occasions. I am a former former player so from sitting in the in the stands it didn't look like we got out talented or out athleted if you will if that's even even right. e even a word it didn't look like we got beat uh, beat physically it just looked like we made one too many stakes and they were just uh, difficult to uh, to overcome and, and I think that's pretty accurate you know we didn't we didn't feel like that as a coaching staff and it didn't really feel like that on the sideline um, you know they've got a talented group don't get me wrong but um, you know I never felt like we were just getting manhandled up front on either side of the ball um, you know, we had three big special teams errors that, that gave our defense short fields. We, we blew two or three coverages that, that shouldn't have happened, uh, that gave them free points. And, and uh, we even had two, two major penalties that didn't get called on them that would have canceled drives out that were both scoring drives. Um, you know, so you sit back and you go, you know, it, it's easy to say, well, if, you know, if this quarter hadn't gone bad or if, you know, but... There's legitimately eight plays which, you know, determined, uh, you know, an 18-point swing in that game, if not a little bit more. And, and uh, but again, some of it was our mistakes. Some of some of it was, uh, you know, poor on a couple calls, and some of it was. The good part is most of it is things that we can control, things that we can fix. So as a as a former player, as a coach, I know it's always tough, obviously, coming off of a off of a, off of a loss. But it did look like there, you guys did do some good things. It looks like you do have some some athletes um, that were able to create and make some plays. So when you want, we want to speak about some of the positives you were able to take away from that, the game against Independence. 
Um, yeah, we, I mean, we do. We are talented. We, we are athletic. Um, we got a little banged up. We, we actually were. We've got three of the best offensive linemen in the conference, and, and at one point, none of them were in the game. Um, you know, one had a shoulder injury, and two of them cramped up. So we were playing with some new guys up front, which is, you know, that's probably not the game that you want to go into having a young offensive line against that talented defensive line. But uh, I think we learned a lot about ourselves in a bunch of different areas, um, specifically. You know, wide receiver, I think we've got some playmakers out there that are going to be able to do some good things. Offensive line, we've proved we've got a little more depth than maybe we thought. That's not the way we wanted to test it, but it's the way that it played out. Um, we feel like we have two quarterbacks that can run the offense pretty pretty successfully. Um, you know, corner. Um, at corner, we have we knew we were going to play with some young bodies there. We weren't really sure what we were going to get, and I think... Once the, 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 the live bullets started flying, some guys kind of weeded themselves out, and I think that'll make us better going into this week. Um, you know, our safety play was consistent. We knew it would be. Our linebacker play wasn't as good as we wanted it to be, um, but the ability is there. It's just we got some guys in the camp late. Uh, we got a transfer that, that I think will end up making a, being an impact player for us, and he really doesn't know where he's going yet, but when he gets it all figured out, I, I think we're going to have a pretty good, I think we'll be pretty solid on defense once they figure it all out. Let's uh, switch to the quarterback play. Yep. You started the game with John Lux, yep. and then in the second half you made a change to Drew Harris. Yep. You want to just speak a little bit about your, your quarterbacks, what each of them brings to the table, to the team, and if you're planning on splitting time between the two or making a, a quarterback change in the upcoming week against Garden City. Yeah, I mean, our plan was to, to split time pretty evenly. Um, and I think in the first half we, we were we were a little bit heavier on John. John knows a little bit more and, and is probably a little a little better overall in the decision making process just because he has more experience to the the verbiage and 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 being able to cycle through his progressions. Um, Drew obviously, as everybody can see, is athletic. He can run around. He can make some throws. Uh, also smart. He just doesn't have as much experience. Um, the reason I went with him in the second half was because we got banged up at the offensive line. Um, and, and John's not, his escape ability is not really one of his strengths. So I didn't want to just have him sitting back there and just having him pin their ears back and come after him. Um, I figured if Drew could run around a little bit, we could slow him down a little bit. And, and But we also, you know, the, the thing that Drew lacks is, is playing experience, you know. So um, getting him in the game and, and letting him just go and good, at, good or bad and, and make the mistakes on the run that we can correct and we can learn from, I thought was going to make us better in the long run. Um, I think there's games... Uh, I don't want to say where there's one game that maybe will go with one stronger than the other. I mean, those are things we'll decide down the road. Um, but I do think that they 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 both have a skill set which is different than the other, uh, and I think they're both valuable. Um, and, and, and my my personal opinion is that that we'll need both of them down the stretch. Um, and it may not be a 50-50 split. It might be 60-40 one day. It might be 30-70 the other, uh, depending on you know who has the hot hand or who's the most consistent. But um, I think they both have the ability to play in this league and, and they'll both do some good things for us. It was obvious that each of them have a particular set of skills that they yep. bring to the team, so I think that will serve you well yep. as you move forward with the, Absolutely. with the season. One thing I wanted to highlight, I know they don't often get a lot of uh, a TV time, mm -hmm. but I wanted to talk a little bit about your kicker puncher. Yep. Now, does he do, do, is that do a roll? Is that the same? Yeah, well, that wasn't the, the goal at the beginning. Um, we recruited a punter out of Australia. Oh, okay. And he was having some trouble with his I-20. Oh, okay. So he was late getting here, and we just didn't feel confident putting him into game one, yeah. um, you know, without having a lot of practice time under his belt. <clears throat> In the process of doing that, Devontae had learned how to punt a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually, I think he averaged almost 49 yards of punt last week now. That's what I was going to bring out. He did well, seem to do a very nice and job. And he yeah. dropped one, though. That was the yeah, other part. His first one he dropped, and, and uh, so he... He did really well. Uh, I think we're going to have a tough decision on our hands to see what. Yeah, I don't think it's his favorite thing in the world um, to do both. He really just wants to kick. Um, but I think he actually, when you're good at something, it's more fun. Absolutely. And the reason he didn't want to do it is because he didn't feel like he was very good at it. Yeah. And I think he's starting to figure it out a little bit. So uh, we'll have probably a little bit of an open competition this week to see you know, who kicks it better. And we'll go with the guy with the liver leg. So we've got a few more minutes uh, uh -huh. left with each other. Coach, let's move away from Independence and look towards Garden City. Okay. This Friday night, you'll be traveling to Garden City, 7 p.m. start. Saturday. Go, 
Saturday, excuse me. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. High Thank school. You. I appreciate High it. High school. Yeah, right. yeah Saturday. So uh, you go from the number five team in the country in Independence. Yep. Now you're traveling Saturday night to face the number 10 ranked team in the uh, in the nation preseason yep. polls. Yep. What's your overall uh, thoughts on Garden City entering that game? You know, I never take much stake in uh, preseason polls. You know, at this level, who knows who has what in some years. You know, teams aren't going to pan out to be what people thought they were, and some people are going to sneak up on people and surprise you. But, um, you know, generally, Jeff Sims is going to have a, a good football team. They're going to be sound. They're going to be well coached. They're going to be disciplined. They're going to be good at what they do or whatever it is that they choose to do. Um, we'll find out what that is. The, the, the disadvantage for us is, you know, that they, they didn't play last week, so we don't have film to go off of. They have a new offensive staff, uh, like a completely new offensive staff. Uh, so we don't even know what they're going to do offensively. So that'll be a little bit of a challenge, uh, kind of adjusting as the day goes on. Um, defensively, they've been pretty consistent over the last three years. But they've done a few things that are kind of all over the map, depending on the game. Um, so they may mix some things up, and it'll be a little bit of a cat and mouse game again to figure it out where they, you know, where they, where they're going to kind of move the parts around their puzzles so that we can kind of see what see what we need to do to, to be able to match up. But um, I imagine they'll be deep. I imagine they'll be uh, well coached. I imagine they'll be tough and disciplined and all the things that they usually are. Um, I think our advantage is, is having a lot of those first game kinks and mistakes out of our system. Uh, I think their advantage is having fresh legs and, and, and fresh bodies, whereas ours are a little bit beat up right now. Uh, which is also why I like playing on Thursday night. It gives us a chance to gives you nine days to recover. Yeah, you got some recovery you know, time instead absolutely. of six or seven. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll be ready to go. We'll be much better than we were, you know, this weekend. And, and uh, you know, generally you make a, a big jump between week one and week two in your ability and the small mistakes. And, and the largest jump is actually between week two and week three. So uh, we've got a lot of growing to do. And, and not just because of what we put on the field last Thursday, um, but you know, statistically, historically, the, the teams make that big jump in the first three weeks of the season, and, and, and we're really hoping that we do, because I think we have a good product. We just got to get it all moving in the right direction. In its simplest form, or, or, or the game in its purest form is relatively simple. You run it, catch it, Absolutely throw it, it tackle. Right. But w what are some of the keys to success you see going into this week at, uh, at Garden City? You know, people talk about turnover margin. People talk about all the different cliche statistics. You know, we've had seasons where we won, you know, seven to nine games and lost the turnover battle. And so there's always a statistic that kind of disproves the majority. But, um, you know, I think it, for us, it's not it's not the mistakes, it's the catastrophic mistakes. You know, I, I thought we, we were evenly matched to a point last weekend. Um, we had three catastrophic mistakes that, that put the game in a position where we we had to get out of our comfort zone and try to play catch up and that's not something that you want to do so you know I, i'm not worried about the turnover margin i'm not worried about red zone scoring points i'm not worried about uh third down conversion rates you know and those are all things that that most people measure for us it's it's about don't do the big things that will get you beat more so than it is concentrating on those those major statistics that all the talking heads talk about um, you know, for us, it's just don't give the game away, and you'll you'll probably be have a chance to win the football game. So, uh, for us, it's just gonna be managing the big the big things and and not doing anything, you know, uncharacteristic like we did last weekend. Well, last week I had to wrap up very abruptly and more or less just cut you off. Yes, you did. So this week I can say <laughs> thank you for coming in. Absolutely. Uh, good luck Saturday night. We'll be we'll be cheering you on. Thank you for joining us Appreciate tonight. It. Give thank coach a round of applause, please. Thank you. Folks, I want to thank you all for joining us. Thanks to women's soccer coach Stuart Bordy. We appreciate Michelle Haley for talking about our great nursing program at DC3. And thanks to Conk football coach for joining us as well. As always, thanks to our wonderful host at Gaiman Petro. We hope you guys will head out to a Conk athletic event this week. And please join us again soon on the DC3 Coaches Show. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.